Hey guys, so quick story here. I was just listening to, I don't know if any, any Pearl Jam fans out there, but you know, I kind of grew up in the, uh, I don't know, 80s, 90s when I was younger. Um, and I listened to a lot of Pearl Jam, went to see them a few times in concert. Uh, once with the Rolling Stones, which was absolutely fantastic, Oakland Coliseum, I think it was 1997, the year I got married. A uh, long time ago, at any rate, I was listening to one of the songs. I actually found an iPod that I had many, many years ago and plugged it in. It had, and it's got a whole music list from many moons ago music. And I was just listening to this Pearl Jam song. And I don't know if you guess, it's called Last Kiss. I don't know if you guys have ever heard it. Oh, where, oh, where can my baby be? The Lord took her away from me. She's gone to heaven. And uh, so I've got to be good so I can see my baby when I leave this world. Is That's the, that's the line. Um, the first, you know, the opening line and the, and the theme of the song. And I thought it was funny because really that is, or ironic, really, because that is what most, uh, not just secularists think or ag agnostics, atheists, whatever, you know, they, they, they think if there is a, such a place as heaven, I just got to be good. And, you know, that's where all my relatives went because they were mostly good. And so I got to mostly be good. And if my good deeds outweigh my bad deeds, then I'll go there. But, um, I, I want to add that this is actually, this is the point I'm doing this video, or one of the main points, is that this is one of the main beliefs of Christians, self-professing Christians, that heaven exists and, uh, you know, family members, friends have gone to heaven, they're pretty good people, and I got to be good, um, you know, he says, so she's, she's go, gone to heaven, so I've got to be good, so I can see my baby when I leave this world. That is sadly what most self-professing Christians believe. They believe in a works-based salvation that they, they have to meet some level or standard of performance to be good enough in God's eyes uh, to go to heaven. Now, one thing you're, they're right about is heaven does exist. Heaven is for real. Um, it is a real place. Uh, the new heavens and the new earth will replace this uh, earth. Uh, the old heavens and the old earth will be replaced by the new heavens and the new earth for all of eternity and all of God's people will dwell there no more pain no more suffering no more tears uh, no more anything bad Every, everything good for all of eternity everything perfect for all of eternity not just good but perfect and uh, you know the, the bad news is that so most of of the world's religions and even kind of secularist systems believe in a good you know a scale that the, the creator, God, whoever people want to refer to him as, they believe that he's got a scale and he, and he measures or weighs your, your good deeds against your bad deeds. And then if your good deeds outweigh your bad deeds, your good behavior outweighs your bad behavior, then you're going to make it to heaven. But I'm here to tell you that God does not grade on a scale. It's pass-fail. Uh, in order to be in God's presence, we have to be perfect, sinlessly perfect. Because he's sinlessly perfect. Now, uh, for those of us who are born again, in other words, we've trusted in the finished redemptive work of Jesus Christ. We've believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and we've been saved. From the penalty and punishment of our sins, we've received the Holy Spirit, eternal life, and the guarantee of heaven, uh, eternity in the new heavens and the new earth. Um, obviously, we're in our uh, bodies of flesh, sinful bodies of flesh. So therefore, we, uh, uh, you know, God is still in our presence but he dwells in us, in our spirit. So the spirit of Christ is united with our spirit, all right, apart from our sinful flesh. Uh, so I want to make that clear that even though we're, we're still in these bodies of flesh until we get our glorified, sinlessly perfect bodies, which happens at the glorification, which happen, happens at the rapture, which I believe is very, very soon, um, God still dwells in us in our spirit, the moment we believe the good news of the gospel. And you can too, right now. I don't know what would stop you. What would stop you from just believing the good news of the gospel, that Christ died for your sins, that he was buried, that he rose again on the third day, according to the scriptures for your justification. You literally can receive the promised Holy Spirit, God coming to live inside you forever, never to leave you nor forsake you. You can receive eternal life, forgiveness of all of your sins and eternal life with him forever. Um, really, it's the only... Uh, thing that really matters in this life for eternity is do you believe or do you not believe have you trusted in Christ alone as your savior do you have eternal life or don't you that's really the question that I leave you with today because you know Pearl Jam Eddie Vedder 
You know, maybe that's what he believes. I don't know if he wrote the song. Where, oh, where can my baby be? The Lord has taken her away from me. Uh, she's gone to heaven, so I got to be good. So he thinks that to go to heaven, you got to be good. Because that's why she went to heaven, because she's good. But the Bible says none are good. All have fallen short of the glory of God. Uh, no, yea, not one are good. Not one person who has ever walked this earth apart from Jesus Christ, the God-man, 100% God, 100% man. Uh, God put on flesh, uh, left glory in heaven, came down to earth, uh, lived amongst fallen man, and became the sinlessly perfect, spotless, spotless, unblemished uh, Passover lamb who died on Passover, shedding his perfect blood for the remission of all of our sins as our sacrifice, our perfect sacrifice, that whosoever would believe in him would not perish, but have eternal life, John 3, 16. God made salvation so simple. God loves you so much that he sent his son to die for you. God literally put on human flesh and shed his blood for you. That's how much he loves you. No matter how bad or wretched you think you are, no amount of good works, even on your best day, ain't going to earn you heaven. The only thing that's going to qualify you for heaven is when you come to the end of yourself and recognize, even on your best day, your, your, your best day, your best work, your best deed is a filthy rag in God's eyes. I think it's Isaiah chapter 66. All of our work, they're like works. Our works done in the flesh are like filthy rags to God. Not because we're not well-intentioned, but because uh, God's standard is perfection. And even on our best day, we don't even come close, guys. All right, so the good news is no matter what you've, maybe you've been taught this, that uh, you got to be good so you can go to heaven. Well, let me just tell you, God's standard is perfection. And we can't be we can't be perfect on our own. If you've ever lied or stolen something or cheated, you've already broken, you've broken God's laws. Okay, when we are each born uh, into sin, sin means, uh, it's an archery term actually, it means to miss the mark. And in this case, it's missing the mark of God's perfect holiness, his standard of perfection, of perfection. And so we, we all miss the mark. And we've all missed it many, many times in our lives, if we're going to be honest. Don't say you haven't sinned, because if you've never, if you say you're, uh, if you say you've never sinned, then you've deceived yourself and the truth is not in you, 1 John 1, 8. But the good news is that when we confess or acknowledge that we are sinners in need of a Savior, He's just and faithful to forgive us of our sins and to, you know, to forgive us of all our trespasses, cleanse us from all our unrighteousness, 1 John 1, 9 says. That's the good news. When we come into agreement with God in terms of his judgment on the flesh, right? Uh, that when we admit that we are sinners, that is our, you know, and, and that we can't save ourselves, and that we are uh, sinners in need of a Savior, and that Jesus Christ is the Savior, no under name under heaven by which man can be saved, Acts chapter 4, verse 12. The good news is that he comes and immediately saves you. He saves your, your, your soul. He forgives all of your sins, past, present, and future, and they were all future 2,000 years ago. He comes to dwell inside you the moment, the nanosecond, you trust in Him as your Savior. He made it so easy. It's not a lifetime of keeping commandments or trusting or obedience to the law or whatever you might have learned. It's a moment of trust. That is what being born again in an instant, in a nanosecond, in a zaptosecond, whatever you want to call it, is all about. It means coming to the end of yourself and trusting that the eternally existing Son of God, God the Son, Jesus Christ, died for all of your sins. And He loves you that much. That he was buried, proven that he was dead, and that he rose again on the third day according to the scriptures for your justification. This is what all of the Old Testament prophets prophesied of the coming Messiah. So when it says of the scriptures, it means of the Old Testament scriptures because the New Testament hadn't been written yet. All right, so when, when we read that, uh, uh, that, that is referring to the... The, the script according to the scriptures in 1 Corinthians 15 is re, that is in, in reference to the Old uh, Testament scriptures which all prophesied of the coming Messiah Jesus Christ they didn't know his name but they knew and they placed their faith in the coming Messiah the promised seed first announced in Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 who would crush the head of the serpent the serpent representing Satan and we know that Jesus will crush the head of the serpent and we know that he already has uh from eternity's perspective, defeated sin and death. He's already defeated foe, Satan. Uh, but he still has, he's still the prince of the power of the air until Jesus comes to set up his millennial kingdom.
and then he'll be let out for a season at the end of the millennial kingdom and then we will enter into the eternal state and he will no longer be he will be cast into back into the uh the fiery furnace and he will go into the lake of fire and will spend eternity with all of his minions and forever and and, he, and, and also included in that group will be anybody who has denied or rejected the one true gospel of grace. And if that's you, if you've never trusted in the finished redemptive work of Jesus Christ, then there's only one of two places you're going to spend eternity, either with God forever by receiving Christ as your Savior, by trusting in Him, placing your faith in His finished redemptive work, which you can do right now, or by you'll spend eternity separated from God by your own volition, by your own choice. You'll have chosen, you'll have said to God, Thank you for your offer, but I'm going to reject it. I'm not going to receive that free gift. I'm not going to place my faith in Christ alone as my Savior. And I pray that that's not you. I pray that everybody listening to this message uh, would trust in Christ alone. And that means, and that trusting in Christ alone means exactly what it says. You know, trusting in the finished redemptive work of Jesus. He's the Savior. We're not the Saviors. We're not even co-Saviors. Not even 1%. Okay? It's not like Jesus did 99%. We got to kick in the tip. We got to kick in the 1%, whatever, pay for the appetizer. No, he pays for the whole enchilada, the whole meal. He pays for the appetizer, the main course, the dessert, the tip. He pays for it all. He said on Calvary's cross to tell us to die, debt paid in full. That's what it means. He paid our sin debt in full, in toto. Uh, and the only requirement is just believing, trusting, placing your faith, coming to the end of yourself, trusting he did it for you. But if you're, if, you, if you're holding on and you're saying, no, Greg, it's not good enough to just trust in Christ alone. I need to turn from my sins. I need to stop sinning. I need to daily confess all my sins. I need to repent of my sins. I need to get water baptized. I need to sp uh, speak in tongues. Uh, no, I need to demonstrate a, a holy life, proving that I'm saved. Now your faith is not in Christ alone. It's partially in Jesus and mostly in yourself. And I pray that if that's you, I pray you would repent, which comes from the Greek word metanoia, which means to change your mind. In terms of salvation, it means to go from not trusting in Christ alone as Savior to trusting in Christ alone as Savior. It's the glorious good news of the gospel. And if this is the first time you've ever trusted in Christ alone as your Savior, congratulations. The angels are rejoicing. We and our channel family are rejoicing. This is God's channel. Um, I do this channel to share the gospel. I'm just an ambassador for Christ. I'm a porter. I'm pointing people to the gospel, the good news of the gospel. I'm saying, hey, there's heaven. There's how you get there. For the most part, you know, I do other things and we defend sound doctrine and uh, shoot down false gospels and expose false teachers. Uh, but the main thing we do is share the good news. We tell people how to get to heaven because so many people haven't heard it. Most of the people have heard a false gospel that you have to do your part, that you have to do a certain amount of works. Or like Eddie Vedder says, you got to, you know, she's gone to heaven, so I've got to be good. So I can see my baby when I leave this world. Now, if you think any of your relatives or friends or family are in heaven, there's only one way, you know, if they believe the gospel, they're there. If they've ever trusted in Christ alone as Savior, then they are in heaven. Okay, and you will see them again if you believe the gospel too. So it's, 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 it's not based on works, okay? For, for it is by grace you've been saved uh, through faith. This is not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not by works, lest any man should boast. There will be no boasting in heaven. Right? To him who worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is credited to him as righteousness. All right? So that's Romans chapter 4, verse 5. It's your faith that is credited to you as righteous. So you're, you're righteous in God's eyes by your faith alone. All right? Apart from any works. So if you want to be assured that you will see your loved ones. All right? And Eddie Vedder, if you're listening to this, I don't know if this is a true story. Maybe you lost your girlfriend or wife or somebody. If you think she's in heaven, the only way for you to get to heaven is by believing the gospel, placing your faith in the finished redemptive work of Jesus Christ, which can be found explicitly laid out in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4. It's the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ Jesus, the Messiah, the Savior. All right? And the only way to get to heaven, to spend eternity with God forever, is to believe the gospel. So the, my, my question that I'll leave you with is, do you believe the gospel? Have you placed your faith in the finished redemptive work of Jesus Christ and in none of your own works, in no works at all? Is all your faith in Christ? Have you come to the end of yourself and recognized that you're a sinner in need of a Savior and the only one could save you from the penalty and punishment of your sins and give you eternal life? And His Spirit is the Lord Jesus Christ. And if the answer to that is yes, yes, Greg, I believe. I've trusted in Jesus Christ alone as my Savior. 
And congratulations, you're saved forever. Sealed by the Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13 and 14. Uh, guarantees, which is the guarantee of your inheritance. Sealed until the day of redemption. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. Which is the guarantee that you can never lose your salvation. Because how long are you sealed by the Holy Spirit of Christ for? Until the day of redemption. Until he redeems the promised possession. Which is you and me, the body of Christ. Until he redeems us. We get our glorified, sinlessly perfect body. That we will have forever and ever. All right, And he promises us in his word. You can never lose your salvation. John chapter 10 verses 27 through 31. You can never be plucked from his hand. The hand of Jesus. The hand of God the Father, or uh, separated from His love. Uh, Romans chapter eight, verses thirty-eight and thirty-nine. Roman, excuse me, John chapter ten, uh, verses twenty-seven through thirty-one, and John three sixteen also guarantees that no born again believer can ever perish. Where do we perish? We perish in hell. So it's a guarantee that we'll never spend one nanosecond in hell. All right, guys. So. If you're not saved, may today be the day of salvation for you. It's not based on being a good boy. None of us are good boys or good girls. Not according to God's holy, perfect, holy, righteous standard. All right. The only the work in the will of God is that we would believe on the one whom he has sent. All right. Salvation isn't a matter of doing our good works. It's a matter of trusting in the good work that God has done. For the work of God is to believe on the one whom he has sent. John chapter 6, verse 29. It's just that simple. Trusting in his finished redemptive work. All right, guys. Hey, do me a favor. Uh, share this with anybody the Lord lays on your heart that you don't believe has, has ever heard the one true gospel of grace. Anybody who, uh, you know, on this Labor Day weekend who needs to cease from laboring uh, and uh, who you, you believe needs to really just, they need to enter into that rest. They need to know that they're saved, forgiven for all of their sins, that they have eternal life. Share it with them, all right? And... Uh, I just want to let you guys know I love you and I appreciate you. I read all your comments. I might not respond, you know, at length. Um, frankly, I just I, I just don't have the time. I'm thankful, thankful, excuse me, for almost 8,000 subs, uh, which we're all one channel family uh, in the body, as the body of Christ. No member more important than the other. Uh, and, and I want to let you guys know that when you answer questions and leave comments, uh, they edify me, they encourage me, and I know they edify and encourage others, especially when you go to great lengths to answer questions for people. Uh, that saves me the time. Of course, I read it, and if you know, I believe it's scriptural, which you know, 99% of the time it is, I heart it, and I'm thankful for you guys because uh, you lighten the load, and we're in this together. All right, guys, anyway, I'm starting to ramble. Diary of the Mouth. Have a great Labor Day weekend. Remember to rest in his finished redemptive work. All right, it is finished. All right, guys, I love you.